Welcome to Fandom 101. My name is Julia Bloom and I have been involved with fan culture, conventions, and cosplaying for the past 10 years. In this show, we will talk about what fandom is, what its various aspects are, and what issues need to be addressed in modern fandom and the cosplaying community. Even if you've never seen Star Wars or watched anime, you will still learn about what draws so many to fandom. Today, we will talk about what fandom is and discuss cosplaying or costuming for conventions. Today, my guest is Gladys Young. She is an illustrator and cosplayer as well as a good friend of mine. Welcome, Gladys. Thank you so much for having me here. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so since we're defining um, fandom and explaining what it is, how would you define fandom in general? Mm, I would say fandom is it's a way for people to share their common interest. So most commonly known as entertainment-wise, like from animation, cartoon, comic books, even movies nowadays. And I'll say this word is more used commonly on, on social media. Mm -hmm. So that's where everyone can discuss about what they enjoy a lot. All right, yeah. great. Um, what are your favorite fandoms and why? That is a really tough one. I have a lot of stuff that, I have a lot of things that I really love. So it's kind of hard for me to pick one. So, so I'm sorry. You don't have to pick um, a one. Mm. You can like mention a few of them. I know we both are into tokusatsu or Japanese that, superhero shows as that I is describe very true. it. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say I do enjoy Marvel. Mm -hmm. Marvel have very good, especially, especially the cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I do enjoy My Hero Academia and One Piece. Mm -hmm. So I can I can list out everything, but that's that's probably too long for today, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and um, we both cosplay, but what got you into cosplay? That was actually a very funny story. So like a decade ago, <laughs> so my my best friend wants to go to an anime convention, mm -hmm. but she doesn't want to cosplay alone. So she just. So every day she start asking me and say, Gladys, can you cosplay with me? Uh, I'm not sure. Gladys, will you cosplay <laughs> with me? I'm like, uh, maybe. So because of that, I started to cosplay for the very first time. Mm -hmm. It was very ner it was very nervous because I I rent my outfit, I wearing a wig. That's not we tried to cut for a first time. Yeah, and I go to wear makeup. But I still enjoy it because it was I was enjoying my time with my best friend. Mm -hmm. And then once I got into college, there is a club called RIT Cosplay Troupe, which I participated in there. And it was really fun because with there you got to learn how to do sewing, how to make props, how to do improvs. Mm. Yeah, it was really crazy. And each, and each year we even hold a performance, which, which is what we call a chess show. So mm -hmm. I started to participate in it, and because of this, it enlightened my passion in cosplay again, and I never stopped ever since. Great. Um, is RIT Rhode Island um, oh, technical? Oh, no. It's actually up in Rochester. Ah, okay. It's Rochester Institute of Technology. Ah. Yeah. I didn't know they had a cosplaying club. N neither do I, until I, <laughs> until I study there. Yeah. yeah. I actually also started cosplaying a decade ago. What? Um, yeah. Um, other funny story. Um, I met this guy briefly who invited me to Am Aresia. Mm -hmm. So since Doctor Who with the 11th Doctor had either started or was going to, I made a horrible, non-accurate 11th Doctor cosplay with no wig and went to Aresia. <laughs> I was stood up by that guy, but I... Continued cosplaying. I went to Anime Boston mm -hmm. with my college anime club that year, and I've mm -hmm. been going ever since. I've been recently starting to branch out from just buying stuff at thrift stores mm. or editing stuff from thrift stores in, into making my own costumes, including recently a cosplay coat for Waz from Kamen Rider Zio, which took several months to plan and longer to make. I saw it. I saw that cosplay in person. You look really amazing Thank there. Thank you. You're very it, welcome. Yeah, so that was a really big step forward for me. So mm -hmm. 
hoping to continually increase my skills. <laughs> you uh, got this, Julia. Thanks. So what's your favorite and least favorite part of cosplaying? I'll say my most favorite is definitely on makeup. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I like to see how surprised people are to see how I transform. And I kind of see it as an art challenge to see how many faces I can make. <laughs> so, it'll, so, you know, and I think it's really, it's make it even more fun. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes I even like do that to, to, to like shock people like, hey, it's me. How do I look? <laughs> yeah, and the least favorite is also makeup. <laughs> so I say it's a love-hate relationship. Yeah. Because sometimes one of those makeup can take me around like maybe like two, one to two hours to put it on mm. for the whole thing. And then, and then so that's why time management is always, is always like something I have to keep in mind with. And, and when you had to kick yourself with makeup for the whole day, you get yeah. really exhausted afterwards. <laughs> and, and then once, once you're done, you're just like, I'm not doing this again. And after you're just like, I'm doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so oh. what issues do you think the cosplay community needs to deal with? <sighs> oh. <laughs> Oh dear, there's as as beautiful as cowslip can be. There is still a lot of issues going on. Mm -hmm. Like for example, like there's there's people who are like body shaming others. Some mm -hmm. of them would think that like, oh, you are not at the right race to cosplay certain character. You are not accurate. You are too fat. You're too skinny. You're not buff enough to be mm. the certain character, which I think is very awful because. We cosplay because we enjoy the certain fandom, we enjoy the character, we enjoy the series. So I feel like instead of shaming others, we should support each other, giving positive notes, kind of encourage them to keep going to do mm -hmm. what they like. So that is definitely one issue. That, that is definitely one issue with, with a cosplay, which I've seen a lot and mm -hmm. which I hope people can, people like us, can keep improving on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, everyone should be able to cosplay what they want. That is very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, what advice would you give to a first time cosplayer? Start small. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, I'll say start small. Don't go too ambitious as the first try. So start with, start with like maybe more simpler character. Mm -hmm. And it's totally all right to buy a costume. It's okay to sew something very simple. Just do it step by step. And you don't need to go like crazy makeup. Yeah. Just do it little by little. And once you're comfortable with it, then you can step it up more and be a little bit more ambitious. And you can like give yourself even more like fun challenges mm -hmm. to like, to make it like more lively, more fun, okay. more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So actually, I'd like to see some of your own um, cosplays that, and one that you're working on as well. <laughs> so we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will see some of Gladys's cosplays. <laughs> Welcome back to Fandom 101. My name is Julia, and today I'm talking with Gladys Leung, who's a friend and cosplayer of mine. So Gladys, we're going to discuss some of your cosplays. We actually have a few photos of them right here. All right, so obviously, well, obviously not to my viewers, but to me and you, that's the main character, Deku, character sorry, Deku, <laughs> from yeah. My Hero Academia. Um, can you yeah. tell me a bit about this costume and its process? Funny thing, I actually got this t-shirt online. Oh, neat. <laughs> yeah, I I was like doing doing a quick, quick makeup for, for the My Hero Academy movie. Mm -hmm. And I thought like, instead of just going as myself, why don't I just go as Deku like that? Mm -hmm. so, so I quickly grabbed my wig and quickly put on my contacts and tried to like figure out how to do the makeup. And it was crazy because that was actually my first time figure out how to do makeup for freckles. Ah, I see. So it was also a fun challenge. And I think it's making it more interesting when some people actually thought I'm a high schooler. 
neat. Yeah. How do you do the freckles? Do you just take a um, eyebrow pen, no, eye pen and poke? Um, I contour, contour palette and mm -hmm. brushes. So step, so you kind of like pat a little bit for the color and then you kind of get a darker brown to like, to tap the spot there. Oh, neat. So that's how you can do kind of like a more natural version of freckles. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, cool. so maybe we could look at the next costume. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> that, how, I all, still am trying to find out how you make cheekbones that sharp. Contouring. <laughs> <laughs> and I am bad at contouring, so I need to improve on that. Yeah, and that, that's actually, I can tell you this, this is definitely kicked with makeup. A heavy kicked with makeup because, mm -hmm. because I had to also cover my eyebrows there too. Okay, which character is this? Is is the is one of here? It's it's like All Might, but we call it a Small Might from My Hero Academia, mm -hmm. and that is his Halloween outfit. Oh, I didn't know he had a Halloween outfit. Oh, uh, yes, he kind of does. He it's, looks like a vampire. <laughs> I think that's probably the idea. And yeah, fun fun thing is I. I bought this jacket online and I asked her to get a red fabric to kind of sew the parts. Mm -hmm. And then I painted the skeleton patterns there on the shirt. So I actually get acrylic to, to paint it for, mm -hmm. for days. Okay. For days while like measuring, measuring like where, where are my ribs and where are my bones going to be. Yeah. So it's pretty fun <laughs> and challenging. Yeah, I just noticed the rib cage on the shirt. I painted that. <laughs> yeah, I have painted other pick, um, co costumes before, such as a coat. Mm -hmm. It didn't come out great, but it had the effect of a two-tone brown coat. Mm -hmm. I think that was yeah. great. Yeah, and I like the washed-out background as well. Mm -hmm. I think that was taken at Hull. I think okay. at Hull Reservation Park. So we, so like my photographer friend Ethel, he found he found a location, and then he just told me, "Hey, let's go there and have a photo." And so we just went there and it was such a wonderful place for photography. Nice. And I was cold and freezing at the same time, <laughs> but it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Excuse me. Um, next picture. Uh, I really like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, how did you make the part for the arm? So this one, this one I use, this, I need to think back first. Hmm. Yes, I use, I use a material called Warbler. Mm -hmm. So I heat it with a hot, I heat it with a heat gun, and I just I start like, I start like carve not not carving but like, kind of like, mold it to mold it mm -hmm. to the shape, and I even like curve it a little bit, and then afterwards I add gesso gesso on top, sand it, and then I color with acrylic, mm -hmm. and I actually got this glove on Amazon, but I can't, but I I wore it and I make sure to cut it along to the mm -hmm. to the wrist area so that it will make it look like a one piece. Nice. Yeah, and I think there's some other parts I also work on, like the earrings. Mm -hmm. So earrings and you might, earrings and some other accessories part because I want to see if I could still add a little bit of like flare element in it. So I actually, mm -hmm. let's see, I used, I forgot the material called again. Hmm. Yeah, I used resin for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I also play, I've been like playing around with it, testing it, and then I, I start to apply it for this cosplay. Okay. And I say I'm also pretty proud of it because I also try to figure out how to, how to do scar makeup with, with only eyeshadows and concealer. Oh wow, I didn't know there was all eyeshadow and concealer. <laughs> it, nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Maybe the next picture? Ah uh, yes, this is one of my favorites just because <laughs> of how ridiculously elaborate it is. <laughs> so how did you go about planning this one? Uh, I actually bought this costume online All and right. I have to, I had to keep telling myself when is, when is the time, I, when is the latest time I have to order it. Mm -hmm. so, so I had to estimate when is the shipping and whether it's going to fit me or not. Mm -hmm. And then, and also this is, I think there's also a point for everyone is that before you go to confession, always try on your costume. Yeah. Especially this one has the most compli com complicated parts ever. Mm -hmm. So I have to like try it on like many, many times before I can figure out how to put, how to put every pieces. Yeah. And also make sure to bring a jacket. 
Yes, it can get cold, and in the summer it can get hot. And this is taken in February last year. I see. So probably not the best time for discussing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which character is this, by the way? Um, it's called Alexander from from a game called Fate's Grand Order. Mm -hmm. So so have you heard of Alex Alexander the Great? Um, I only kind of know of him like history. Basic, the basics of history, that kind of thing. Yeah, the game is kind of based on a history. Mm -hmm. And this is this is how the game interpreted a young version of Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. So. And I pretty much really love this character okay. and playing as a character, so I decided to go for him. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right, if we next one. Ah, yes. Um, oh I assume God. that the photographer added the spark effect. Oh, yes, That's he did. really cool. Uh, which yeah. photographer did you use for this one? I I believe I call him Tony, but you can refer to him as Lazaro, Lazaro Photo... No, Lazaro Studios. Mm-hmm. And he... He's he's like a magician to me. He's also an awesome friend. He he found a very right angle at a convention, and then he yeah. added the special effect. And mm -hmm. as I exclaimed to him, "How do you make me cool?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is making me feel more confident about like eventually being able to save up for my own shoot because even though I'm not the best at posing or acting, they'd probably be able to put stuff in and. And there's another thing great is that there are actually photographers that can guide you through posing. So nice. if you're not confident enough, they can mm -hmm. always like give you some suggestion. They can tell you like, you can move your face a little bit, move this mm -hmm. hand like that. So this is why I like working working with my photography friends because they always gave me very good pointers. Nice. And with that, we can just improve, and we somehow got this out. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, next picture. Ah, yes. Um, oh. <laughs> so this is from an anime, um, Land of the Lustrous, that I do want to try to cosplay. And the thing with that anime is the everyone has glossy, basically glass hair. Oh, yes, they do. Have you tried to make that, or did mm. you just cosplay this character because she doesn't have that kind of hair? Nope. I am <laughs> not putting the sparks in there because <laughs> this wig is really long. It's... It even went over my knee. Wow. So, so what, as we said, it's like I have a best friend who's like four feet nine. Yeah. This wig is as tall as, tall as my friend. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so this is the wig that I would definitely don't want to like add anything to yeah. it. Yeah. Instead, I would just probably just add a lot of like wig straightener, like detangling spray, mm -hmm. and just keep combing it, hair straightener for maybe an hour, <laughs> an hour of pain just to come straight. Nice. So after that, I'm not touching it. Was the wig that long originally or did you add wefts? Oh, it is that long originally. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And that is like the longest wig I've ever got. How do you store it? <laughs> like going back and forth to cons? Uh, so what you did is you get the wig, you, mm -hmm. put, you put like a, a ball of paper inside there. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, you kind of like you kind of like carefully roll it down. Some people like to braid it like a pigtail, mm -hmm. but for me, I can still roll it a little bit. And there, and then once you got a hairnet, you just cover with it, and you put it in a plastic bag, ah. and that way you can just travel around with that. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's good. I see. I see people who cause who go from con to con with their wig head and the wig attached in a plastic case. Yeah, for but some. But I don't wig. have the space. Yeah. But for some of their wig, it is kind of mandatory because it's, yeah. it's really went go crazy that if you store it that way, it won't it won't stay in the shape. So so some people would actually carry with the wig cat over there. Okay. Even though the wig cat looks kind of creepy at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, next picture. Uh, ah yes. Um. So this one you can talk about binders. <gasps> yes, definitely. <laughs> Binder, always invest on a good binder. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been telling. That's what I always tell everyone is that instead of using bandages, it's it's best for you to invest your own binder, especially if that's more fitting to your size, and make sure not to make it too tight, or else it might crush. Yeah, crush your rib, and that's probably not the most ideal no. thing. No, I I made a mistake before. <laughs> I use 
I use those elastic bandages. Oh, I've been I've yeah. heard the warnings about those. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I did that, and I went out went for an outdoor photo shoot during the summertime, and it was really hot, and it's like crushing my ribs so uh. much that I had to take it off in the midway, and I say, like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that's that, I definitely definitely like, recommend people to like get a binder to dress if you want to like cross dress as a mm-hmm. as a man or as a boy. And another thing to pointer for for cosplaying as a male character is posing is also change a lot of things. Like the way or how you pose, it can make you look more masculine. Okay. So that is so that will actually make quite a big difference too. All right, great. And you um I think you mentioned that the wig needed that pointy part <gasps> attached separately. Oh oh yes it does. I I had to I had to use wire mm-hmm. and then wrap it with tape. And then I glue the I glue the wick here. We call it as the weft, mm-hmm. the weft on there. And then we add hot glue. Just stick it right on there, and it just stays. Great. <laughs> yeah. All right. And next picture. Ah. Uh, yes. This one's also a very nice picture. Um, can you tell me about making this costume? I bought most of it, besides the top one, besides mm-hmm. the very top crop top. Because I wasn't satisfied with how it looks when I bought it online, so mm-hmm. I decided to just quickly go to Joanne's yeah. and bring bring the fabric over. Try to look at the look at the outfit that I got online. Mm-hmm. Try to figure out the sewing pattern and try to sew everything together. Okay, and, so you were editing the um, costume that you bought. Yeah. Okay. Because some because I'm still trying to improve on sewing, and there. And there is still some parts I can and cannot do, so I decided to like start like like bit by bit. Sometimes like kind of like alter it a little bit mm-hmm. until I'm pretty much happy with it. Mm-hmm. So. And most of your co- uh, costumes do have swords. Of course, going to conventions, <laughs> those can't be real swords. Oh, it cannot. This one is this one is actually a wood sword mm-hmm. that I bought online, but for my cosplay I did before with the with another like blonde hair one, I actually made that sword myself. Okay. So with maybe like ten dollars, with ten hmm. all, the, all the materials by with ten dollars on on like my coast. Oh wow. Yeah. Let's see. I use like eBay foam. I think like not bamboo stick. It's like definitely a, a tiny wood stick, paper, mm-hmm. and then I just spray paint everything at the cloth. There you go. You got the sword right there. Nice. Mm-hmm. So. It was really fun making props, I can say. All right, great. Don't know if there are any more photos. Uh, that might be the last one. Can we check? OK, so mm-hmm. that is the last photo. All right. Um, well, thank you for talking with me today. Um, if we want to um, find more of your work, where can we look? Uh, you can find more of my work on my Instagram called Sungi Bungi. Mm-hmm. And it's also under the same username on t- um, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and actually, if you want to follow me, just look for Henshin for Pie on Twitter or on Instagram. All right. So thank you for joining us to learn more about fandom. I hope to see you next time as we continue to discuss the ins and outs of fan culture. And remember, never stop being passionate about the things you love. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.